Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Spares Box. Don't forget BCW5 on checkout. Today we're back on Gian's Impreza for episode two of the lifting scenario. We're uh, going to be correcting the positive camber that we've got today. So we've actually got a lot of our OEM Subaru parts from different Subarus. Back to the old Subaru Jigsaw. Uh, we do also have a few new parts to replace some of the other bits and pieces that we noticed while we were under the car last time. So let's get the wheels off and we'll uh, kick straight in. So the first thing that we're replacing is the uh, sway bar link brackets. We did touch on that last episode. This is the original one and these are the Forrester ones. So this is a SG Forrester bracket. As you can see, there's about an inch or 25 millimeters difference between the, uh, the overall heights of these. So it's gonna push the sway bar down, which will correct our sway bar angle. So we're gonna be chucking these in first to get the bar back in the correct spot. Then we're actually gonna be pulling all of our lateral arms and our front control arms out of the rear section of the car. So we'll be swapping all of the uh, the lateral arms to a GD STI, which will give us a slightly wider track, which will correct our camber issue. And we're swapping our uh, control arm to an SG Forrester item also, which also gives us a drop on the front end, which should push the wheel back a little bit in the guard. Um, depending on how much pushback we get, we may actually still have to get a corrector bracket for the front, but we're gonna go with the OEM stuff first just to work out exactly what we need. So that'll at least give us more clearance on this front edge, just putting the SG stuff in today. In front of us here, we've got all of the parts that I've removed one side from and all the parts that we've put in, so you can get a, a pretty good visual comparison of the differences of, of what we've fitted for the most part. These parts, you can't really tell a lot, uh, but what they've actually done, I thought it was lower, but what they've actually done is move the mounting hole back in the bracket. So the Forrester one basically pushes the arm back by moving the hole rather than actually dropping it down. This arm length is exactly the same, but yeah, from moving that hole back probably 15 to 20 millimeters, that actually shifts the wheel back in the, um, in the wheel arch to back to the correct position. Um, the biggest visual change I guess you can see is the lateral arm length. Um, by putting these side by side, you can definitely see there's a, a massive uh, length difference. And then finally, we've got our sway bar links. So previously we had this plastic C-type and now we're going to a, an adjustable um, jointed type or spherical jointed type uh, sway bar link for the rear. And we've actually got some cut to length uh, ones coming for the front because we are going to need a bit of extra sway bar link length for the front. So we'll uh, throw them in when they arrive. Uh, but yeah, we're going to keep chipping away and put the, the left side in now. Um, we can also already see a visual difference uh, with the arms installed on the right hand side that the cambers come back to the correct position. And we've actually got pretty much zero camber on the driver's side. And then obviously looking at the left side, we've got a ton of positive camber, probably at least two and a half degrees at full droop. 
which means at ride height we're still going to have a little bit, probably half a degree to one degree of camber, positive camber at ride height. So none of that is uh, ideal. So by putting these longer arms in, that's actually corrected all of our geometry issues for the most part. Um, I know someone is going to go to us, oh, the drive shaft angle sucks. Yes, you're right. If you were going to do this thing properly, in inverted commas, you'd actually space the subframes down. Foresters run uh, subframe spaces in the front, but the problem with doing that is you've actually got to change the steering column, the steering knuckle, run the crossmember spaces, run different bushes on the back of the control arms, and you've also got to put a Forrester rear subframe in. Um, yes, that's the correct way to do it, but we are trying to do this thing on a bit of a timeline because Gian's actually going to the snow this weekend. Um, and also, I don't think for the amount of case he's going to do, it's going to be a massive issue. And we're also not doing a lot of off-roading um, as far as boulders and that kind of thing. It's more of a file trail car and a bit of fun. So, um, yeah, if we were going to do this thing as more of a proper forward driving type vehicle, I would try and correct those drive shaft angles a bit because it can impact on the CVs, changing them and, and making them drive at big angles. So um, something worth keeping in mind if you are going to do a proper off-roading vehicle. But for our particular instance, I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue. Sees on the face. Yeah, real good. To the mirror. We've got all of our uh, suspension and everything done now. We've actually just had it wheel lined down the road. Um, Gian just went and picked it up and it drives pretty good. So quite happy with the outcome so far. But the uh, final part of the uh, snow preparation is a roof basket. So now we're going to do that. Um, we have also decided to make our own crossbars rather than buy a commercially available crossbar purely for saving some height. Um, if we went for an, a sort of off the shelf crossbar, you're probably going to add about 100 mil or four inches between the roof basket and those roof rails. So what I'm actually going to do is nuts uh, the rails that are already there, then put our own crossbars in and then just join that all together that way. So we'll uh, continue on. I legit have seen someone mount one of these with cable ties before, hey. Is that one of those stance meets? 
where they used to always put like four wheels on the roof of the car for no reason. Well, it's always a good day when you've got a pretty substantial pile of scrap metal and you've uh, completed a few tasks on your car. Uh, today is, is much of the same where we've got our lift finished. We've actually got a four inch lift overall now. So between the Forrester struts, the lifted springs, and now a new wheel and tire combination, which is from an Outback. Uh, we've, like I mentioned, we've now basically uh, achieved a four inch lift and that's gonna be heaps better for what Gian wants to do. We've also now got our roof basket on there, which is nice and low profile. So combined with the lift height, we don't want to be too tall so that it's hard to get into shopping centers or whatnot because even though this is designed for off-road, Gian does daily this as well. So it's uh, definitely got to be a bit of a, a solid all-rounder. Um, no doubt he'll be swinging motorbikes or some crazy gear off the roof in no time. But we'll uh, pretty much leave it there. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.